me to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter number three. Joshua is one of my favorite books in the Bible. I love the book of Joshua. I want to talk to you about a word that God gave to me in a time of heavy prayer and intercession to God. It was a word that I knew God had spoken to me as an apostle and to the kingdom of God for the people of faith and for the people of Elevation Point, those who were connected to us supernaturally. When I was in prayer, the Lord said these words to me. He said to me as clear as if you were talking to me. He said to me, I am about to take the body of Christ where the map has never been printed. God is about to take you where the map has never been printed. And it just kept burning in my heart. And I, I was coming over to the church, so Elder was out working around here, and so I said to Elder Bradford, let me tell you what the Lord just said, and out on the parking lot, me and him just had a Jericho march. God is about to do for the body of Christ what you have never, ever seen. I speak that prophetically to the people of faith. God is raising up a people who will dare to believe God in spite of. In spite of whatever is going on around you, God is about to do something awesome. Our text in, in uh, the book of Joshua chapter 3, Joshua chapter 1, Moses died. Some things have to die for the next chapter. Don't make me stay there. Some things in your life must die before God can give you the next chapter. As long as you're holding on to it, God can't do what he wants to do in your life. How many is ready to go to your next chapter? How many is ready for God to increase everything you touch? You have to be willing to say, God, I release that so I can get that that you have in your mind for me. So Joshua raised up, mentored by Moses, suddenly had the weight of the church Upon him. For God said, now Joshua, it's your turn. Moses, my servant, is gone. He is with me and he ain't coming back to the end. Because in the end, Moses and Elijah will all show up. We'll have a time talking about what was and what could have been and what what's going to happen in the millennial kingdom. But God said this day is a defining moment for your life. So I'm not going to preach a long time. I'm going to be a delivery boy today. And I'm going to deliver to you a God word, a prophetic word that can change everything about your tomorrow. How many sick of yesterday? Make sure I'm in the right house. How many sick and tired of yesterday? How many is ready to embrace what God has for your tomorrow? So God said to Joshua, Joshua, it's your turn to step into the promised land. It's your turn to step to the new dimension. I believe that God's going to raise up a people, and I'm seeing it right. Let me tell you what. What happened? Monday night, as I mentioned, I was preaching live on Daystar, 210 nations, 20 nations, whatever it is. And uh, a, a young lady was watching that had got laid off of her job, had been trying to get a job for many, many months. 
everywhere she applied, they said, well, we'll think about it. We'll look at your resume. We'll call you if there's an opening. So this went on and on and on. She called, gave an offering to Daystar, and when she did, the next morning, which was this past Tuesday morning, she got up, started getting her coffee ready for the day, and a phone call came. Somebody say a phone call's coming. See, what some of you don't know, you're closer to your miracle than you think you are. You're closer to your supernatural than you think you are. We are a supernatural church. Hello? I said we are a supernatural church. Don't ever bring the church down to live in by natural. We are a supernatural church. And when you obey a God instruction from a servant of God, it changes everything in your life. The Bible says if you believe his prophets, his mouthpieces, God will change your future. Somebody is about to get a word, respond to that word, and God's going to change your future. So she gets up, starts making her coffee. Her phone rings, her cell phone. She picks up her cell phone. Didn't recognize the number, answered it anyway. When she answered it, it was a place she had put in her resume months before. Not heard a word. They said, ma'am, we have decided you're the person for our job. Now watch this. She said, well, I've decided I can't work for what I told you I could work for. I thought, well, that was kind of bold. Hello, somebody. She said, I've decided since you waited months, i got to have more money. That's how much you got to have. So she gave the amount. They said, okay, we'll, we'll do that. we got to have you. Right now, she hung the phone up. As she hung it up, before she could lay the phone down, it rang again. Somebody say hotline. See, some of you don't know you're on the edge of the greatest days of your life. I I can tell you I feel something in the house that's about to break out for somebody. I don't know who you are. God brought you here. God ordered your footsteps. And God's about to do something fresh, new, and big in your life. So she said, I don't know that number either. So Pastor Jonathan, she just picked the phone up and answered. She had it in her hand, answered it. When she answered, they said, ma'am, you was in here about 12 weeks ago and left us your resume. We had a meeting today. We're going to hire you today. She said, oh, h- hold on, time out. What do you mean you're going to hire me today? Twelve weeks ago, I needed that job. They said, do you have another job? She said, I'm not sure. They said, what do you mean you're not sure? She said, well, I got several That's already beginning to work. But I don't know yet. What are you willing to pay me? They said, well, you put an amount on your resume. She said, I changed my mind. Somebody say, change is good. See, some of y'all don't know it, but you're about to get a raise. And you're about to get a promotion. And you're about to step into your best day. Anybody here ready to go where you've never gone? Somebody is about to use your faith and march off of the map. They said, well, what will you work for? She said, well, I doubled that other one. I'm going to triple this one. She said, well, I would have worked for that, but that was 12 weeks ago. I'm willing to work, but you're going to pay me three times what that piece of paper said. They said, well... Uh, 
okay, we'll pay you three times. See, somebody in here don't understand it. Faith is powerful. I said faith is a force. There's something about positioning yourself in the faith walk of God. God's about to do something. So she accepted that job. She sent me a, a message, a direct message on Facebook and said, I know one thing, when the prophet speaks from now on, I'm going to do what the prophet said. She said, I just got the best paying job of my life. Somebody in here has got to hear the voice of God telling you your best days are about to happen. Your best days are about to come in here. Your best days are about to happen in your life. Joshua, you're about to step in to the greatest days of your life. It was in B.C. 330. 330 B.C., a man by the name of Alexander the Great. Y'all ever heard of that guy? I hadn't heard a whole lot about him because I never did like history till I was grown. In school, I, I happened to have a coach who taught history who liked me, so I didn't study history. I just got a grade for it. But then I went to college, and I thought, my God, I don't know nothing about history, and they signed me up for a history record. I didn't, uh, I didn't, well, anyway, well, come to find out, my history teacher in college was my coach for rodeo. Somebody say favor ain't fair. But anyway, once I got out into the life of the kingdom of God, suddenly history became important to me. I began to study history and what happened to people and how people responded and things that happened in their life. So when God spoke to me that he was taking us into a territory where the map was not even printed, he's about to give you revelation. Are you receiving it, prophet? He's about to give you revelation well, you've never walked. God's about to take his people to a dimension in their life where they've never been. So Alexander the Great just conquered the great empires of his day, had conquered, became the world's leader. His generals thought, sure, he would take a month of vacation. But instead of vacation... He called all of his top generals in. And he said to them, where, where else can we go and conquer? And they said to him, you've conquered the map. So he said to his generals, march off the map. Somebody beside me is about to march off the map. <laughs> You're about to put your feet on brand new territory. I don't care what anybody else has said. You're about to step in. Does anybody hear me? I said, you're about to step into brand new territory. Just your shadow will heal the sick. I wish I had a believer in the house. This book said Simon Peter's shadow healed the sick. Somebody's got to know this day will be greater than the book of Acts. Your shadow. If a little boy can take his little basket of lunch and feed 5,000, what in the world can we do in these last days as we're stepping in to a brand new territory. I want us to get an attitude that Alexander the Great had. Men, take the armies 
and go where there is no map. I want some people in here to get up with an attitude in the morning. I'm taking over. It's my takeover time. I will not sit where I am another day. See, I believe the Holy Spirit of God is giving an order today to us to march off the map. How many, how many in here is ready to march off the map? How many is ready to take your company where it's never been? How many is ready to take your job where it's never been? How many is ready to possess what you never possess? So watch this. I, I'm going to read verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5. And then I'm going to give you the outline, and we're going to have communion. Look at verse 3. Joshua 3, they commanded the people, saying, When you see, somebody say see, when you see the ark of the covenant. Somebody say the word of God. When you see the ark of of the covenant of the Lord your God, the priests, the men and women of God, bearing that ark, then you shall get up, remove yourself from that place, and go after the word. Somebody say, I'm going after the word. Verse 4, yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 200 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that you may know, somebody say, I may know, not guess so, I may know the way which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. There is no map where they're about to go. Nobody else had ever walked into the Jordan River. They're about to go where nobody else has gone. Some of you right here, right now, thought you'd just come into a little old Sunday morning service, but God has a plan to take you where you've never gone. Look at your neighbor and say, the map ain't even printed yet. God's instructions to you are going to be so fresh and so powerful, you've never even been there. The map has not even been printed where you're about to go. My God, I'm excited. God is about to take you where you've never been in your life. Uh, somebody say, I'm ready. And Joshua, verse 5, said unto the people, Sanctify, separate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Somebody say, the next 24 hours, God's going to change my life. Y'all, make sure... You have got your phone out and got everybody listening because God's got a word for some of y'all friends. You need to go to Elevation Point Facebook. If you haven't at home, you need to go there. Share it because God is about to do something off of the charts. When God spoke this to me, he was talking to me and to those that touch my life. God is about to take you where you've never gone. Somebody say, I'm ready. Now, some principles real quick that I want to give you, then we'll share communion. Number one principle, you got to be open to the new that God is about to do and embrace it. Somebody say, new things are about to happen to me. See, sometimes we sit in a church service Hear God's prophetic word, but never receive it because you don't embrace it. Somebody say, I'm going to take this word. Come on, say it again. I'm going to take this word, and I'm going to live by it. Faith is a force. When you take the word, things are going to change in your life. 
Now watch this carefully. Isaiah 43, 18, 19, you know, it's one of my very favorite scriptures. God said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. Can I tell somebody the passing of Billy Graham opened a door for a new thing? When that great general said hello to God, goodbye to his family, something happened supernaturally. God is about to do a new thing like you have never seen. Can I just say it this way? Your barren places are about to blossom. Your dry places are about to get wet. God's about to bring a harvest where there has been no harvest. God is about to show up where you've had to struggle. But may I just make an announcement prophetically? Struggles are ending today. I think y'all I think y'all get a little better over here. I'll try them again in a minute. I said struggles are ending today. Let's try it back on this side. I said struggles are ending today. That's what I'm talking about. You have to embrace it. You have to put your arms around it. You've got to say, this is my word. This is God's word for me. See, I don't believe God ever gives the apostles a word for just himself. I believe God gives an apostolic prophetic word for those who are connected. That's the reason we talk so much at this church about getting connected. Because what's at the head flows down to the body. See, I remember so well when God spoke to mine in Dr. D's heart and said years ago when the apostolic began to flow, he said, I'm about to break new ground in you. I'm about to use you and the people of God at a new dimension. Somebody in here is about to have the most exciting year of your life. Somebody in this house watching us is about to have the most exciting year of your life. Somebody shout, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, I love this scripture. Paul said, I'm about to take you where your eyes have not seen or your ears have not heard or your heart been able to comprehend. I'm about to do for you things I have already prepared. I want to tell somebody, God ain't going to have to prepare it. There's a suddenly about to happen for you and God's going to give you a catapult into your new dimension. Somebody shout, I'm ready, 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 ready. Second thing that I want to say to you is a principle. You have to see things God's way. Your vision is essential to your next level. Your perception. What do you see, not with your natural eyes, but what do you see by the Holy Spirit? What is it that God is saying to you about where he's about to take you? And I want to tell you something. Don't let your past decide where God's going to take you. I said don't let your past, whatever that's been, good, bad, or indifferent, even have any effect on this word to you God's about to do a new thing. Proverbs 29, 18. 29, 18 of the book of Proverbs said, without a vision, without you seeing properly, people will perish. Somebody say, people will perish. Not only you will perish, but your family will perish. So it's not only that you hear and you see properly, but for God's sake, for your family 
hear what God's saying today. God said in the Amplified, unless you have a revelation by the prophetic, you will not do what God's called you to do. There's a reason that God said build the church on the cornerstone of the apostle and the prophet. We got all kinds of churches in America where they're trying to build an organization, but they forgot the cornerstone. And without the cornerstone, the church will fail. Hello, somebody. I don't care how well organized you are, how great a speaker you are, unless you have the anointing and the power and the plans of God, it won't work. Hello, somebody. There's a reason that Elevation Point was birthed in the supernatural because the supernatural does for people nothing else can do. So that's why in this house we've had cancers healed. We've had lameness healed. We've had relationships healed. We've had people's lives put back together. We are a house of restoration. I said, we are a house of restoration. We believe God raised us up as a house of restoration. God never intended for you to be able to try to make it on your own. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, you have to see the invisible if you're going to obtain the unattainable. You have to see the invisible. Well, you can't see the invisible in your natural eyes. You see the invisible because the anointing of God's Spirit touched your eyes. Why do you think they said in the book of Revelation, anoint your eyes with holy eye salve? That means so you can see beyond where you're at right now. So without a vision, people will end up in trouble. Amen? Number three, third principle. Consecration is necessary before conquest. Consecration is necessary before conquest. God said to Joshua, take them across the Jordan. Supernaturally take them across. I know it's flood time. I know the circumstances aren't right, but it's my time. Take the children of Israel across supernatural. When you get to the other side, stop at Gilgal. Well, Joshua 5, stop at Gilgal. When you stop at Gilgal, cut off the unnecessary. Before you go to Jericho and take that city, cut off the unnecessary. God's talking to somebody in here to disconnect from some things. Yeah, there's some things you need to pucker up and kiss goodbye. They can't go to your new territory. Secondly, you need to disconnect from toxic people. Some of y'all are hanging around the wrong people. I don't know how to say it any plain than that. I said some of y'all are hanging around the wrong people. And their toxic and their drama has got you messed up. Because you're trying to resolve their issue and they don't want their issue even dealt with. So you're in the midst of their issue. See, some of y'all look at me like, oh, my God, he's messing with me. No, some of y'all need to go click, click, get rid of some people out of your life so you can enter what God has for you. You can never have increased the blessing of God hanging on to those kind of people. I'm so glad for my bride, 20 years coming up. Y'all pray for her. She's put up with me 20 years. 
20, 20 years. More than 20 years we've been knowing each other. But 20 years, I hear you, Elder. I'm praying for Mamie, too. He opened that door. Don't get mad at me. He opened that door. He knows I'm kidding him. But I know that God connected me with her for my destiny. Hello, somebody. You've got to understand, when you come in this house, you make a connection in this house, God did it for destiny. God did it for purpose. Some of you got all healed up, you've been blessed, and you're about to enter the best years of your life because God wanted you connected to powerful faith people. People who say God can do anything. People who say nothing's too hard with God. People who say believe and all things are possible. But I never will forget, we haven't been married very long. We're still learning each other. Some of y'all still trying to learn. I am too. And so I came, came into the office one day. I'd been out in the yard, and she had looked out the window, saw me talking to somebody. When I walked into the office, closed the door in our private office, she said, Honey, I have a word for you. I thought, hmm, okay. She's turned into a prophet. She looked straight at me, and she said, that person is poison. If you keep drinking that poison, it's going to poison you. And I said, hello, world. I immediately took her word, went back to that person, and I said, as of today, we won't be connected any longer. You say, why? Because they rejected the voice of God. I had dealt with them as a prophet many times. They rejected what I said. And when I came in from giving instruction to them, I knew they was rejected it. I could tell by the look in their face. Then God spoke to the prophetess and said, tell him, get rid of the poison. It's been almost 20 years ago. Hot dog Jesus, I ain't had no more poison. See, some people you have to disconnect from. See, you got to separate yourself so you can get all he's wanting you to have. And, that, and that's not easy. I'm not going to tell you that's easy. Sometimes it's very, very difficult. But you have to do what God's called you to do. Don't hang around with a bunch of losers, negative people, small thinking, and expect God to give you the whole world. you got to hang with people who think big, talk their faith, and live it. Amen? So there's a time in your life where God says you've got to change your behavior. See, some people are always asking, they ask me this question, they ask me this question, why is it that you and Dr. D are so blessed? Why is it? If I should tell you what God poured into my hands in the last 30 days, some of y'all just fall on the floor. I didn't ask for it. God spoke to people everywhere to pour into a fruitful vine so they could be blessed. See, some of you got to realize God's about to bless you because you're getting connected to the right source. Get the wrong people out, and the right people will come in. Hello, church. Somebody say, I'm ready for the right people. You have to have the right people. Number four, the fourth principle is radical faith. Not common sense, but radical faith. I'm going to tell you something real, real simple. I'll not be on this point long, 
I want to tell you, God's looking for people of radical faith. What the world says is impossible. What the enemy of your life says is impossible. God said, forget common sense. Quit trying to live by your five senses. Live by faith. Are you listening to me, church? You've got to live by faith. Without faith, Hebrews 11, 6, said you can't even please God. Without faith, you'll never get where God wants to take you. Sometimes you got to shut your brain down and let your heart rule. The Bible said out of the heart, man believes. Out of the heart. Man believes. We need people. Let, let, me, let me ask you. I, I got to. I got to get this last point and take communion. Let me. Do you think Abraham used common sense when he was sitting on his porch, a hundred years old, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, "Get up, leave." Get out of your comfort zone and head to a new territory. And he asked God, where are you take me? And God said, I'll show you as you go. I'll show you as you go. Somebody has been where you are stuck because you're waiting on God to tell you what the end's going to be before you take the first step. No. Abraham got up, got his 90-year-old wife, and took off, obeyed God, and become the father of many nations. God is about to take you where you've never gone. How many beside me is ready to walk off the mountain? The last thing I want to say to you, number five, the fifth principle that I want to leave with you, very simple, overflow provision comes when you step into that unknown following after God. Somebody say, I'm ready for overflow. Say it again with authority, I'm ready for overflow. See, I believe that God's going to do such a quick work in some of y'all's lives, it's going to shock you. I'm talking about a quick work. I'm talking about a suddenly out of nowhere. God's going to cause overflow to come into your life. Somebody say, I'm ready for overflow. See, I know there is a time and a place where I broke the back of lack. There was no more poverty in mine and Dee's life. It took a radical act of faith. I mean, it took a radical act. We were ready to do something big in the kingdom. But God said to me, you got to take a step of faith where you've never been. At the same time he is talking to me about it, he is talking to the first lady about it. We took that step of faith, broke the back of poverty, broke the back of lack, and since that day to this day, God's been faithful. Somebody, God's going to ask of you to do something beyond the norm in your giving. So you don't have to talk about giving. I do have to talk about giving because it was giving that positioned D and I to step into the blessing of God. It's going to be by your faith giving that God's going to position you to step into your position. How many is ready to take the step? Hold your hand up high. How many is ready to take the step? Stand with me all over the room. Stand with me all over the room. You're about to march off the map. God's about to take you where you've never been. This is your time to embrace the new that God has.